Welcome to The M Word, where we bring you unfiltered conversations about all things marketing. Join us as we discuss the many highs and lows, bumps and twists, failures and successes of marketing and running a successful business. We are your hosts, Jennifer Mulchandani and Heather Michaelgaard. Get ready for an uncensored journey into the world of marketing. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Heather. We don't know how to start when it's just the two of us. <laughs> we're both looking at each other. Well, we're recording this, uh, this here, our final episode of the season of the M Word podcast. And we're doing it over Zoom because you are a little under the weather, which I, is a bummer. I am. I caught whatever is going around that a lot of people seem to have right now. So excuse the voice, but it's great to be here with you as we close out this season of the M Word. Yes. So we were talking um, pre-show or if that's what we call it. Maybe we we should learn the terminology now that we've been doing this for three years. But really, it's been three seasons or and roughly three years um, of doing this little experimental podcasting. What have we learned? Besides the fact that Zoom is awesome, because when your podcast guest can't be here in person, uh, Zoom actually does great audio recording. And our sound guy, Ben... He thinks that it sounds better when we use Zoom because I think you and I both are very, uh, we gesticulate a lot with our hands and we knock the microphone too much. So it's a little cleaner when we're uh, this way. Yes. Shout out to Ben and shout out to Zoom. It is very much easier to do it this way. I will say, though, I'm very impressed with your technical skills. I've watched you over the last three seasons learn the mics and the inputs and the outputs, and I've been absolutely no help. So um, you have definitely stepped up your auditory game as well. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, And I think, you know, if I had to do it all over again, maybe we would just use Zoom. But I much prefer, and I think this is a lesson, when I think of all of the guests we've had over the three seasons, um, since we started during COVID, I mean, that they, that most of those were all zoom. It was, it wasn't until kind of the end of season one, did we do anything in person? Um, and when we got in person, it was, there was more, um, it, the emotion was there. Like the humanness mm-hmm. gets lost. I think a little bit when you're talking and meeting people over zoom, cause we cannot make eye contact. So okay. I, I definitely like meeting people in person when that's possible. I also think as duo hosts, it's harder to kind of match each other's energy and know like, you know, if we're sitting next to each other, I can be like, no, 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 I I got a question or you can stop me because you have a follow up. Um, I think we found it more challenging on Zoom and we would try to mute each other and like send notes in the chat, but then sometimes we'd forget to mute and then we hear it's typing and... (laughs) Um, so I do think body language, um, and yeah, just that, that human interaction and the, um, even the pre and post show where we can get to know the person we're interviewing a little bit more and, and say to them, you know, what's off limits? What do you feel comfortable sharing? What don't you want to share? Um, and just get to know them a little bit it's kind of broke the ice too. when we when we jumped into the actual interview. That's right. I mean, I think. I think the difference may be between what we're producing and say uh, some of the, you know, NPR produced podcasts and things is we're not, we don't have a team of people doing research and prep um, for weeks at a time leading up to a guest appearance. We gather a little bit of info. We look at people's websites. um, But often like our interviews really are about getting to know somebody along with the listeners, right? It's, it's, it's a conversation that's meant to be, a, a bit of unscripted. I think that's one of the things we did learn is in the beginning, I thought we were very scripted, not in an editing way, because we didn't edit. So conversations would come out the way we intended them to, but we had wrote questions and we we sort of went through from question one through six and we bounced back and forth. And I think what we both, it kind of organically changed over these last three seasons to you and I just really having an organic conversation. I'm going to use the word organic many times, apparently, but really just letting the conversation build. And, you know, besides like a couple prompts, and I I thought we used it more as prompts and not as scripting questions. 
um, it felt easier to have conversations with people and not do a ton of research and be like, you know, prepped on, on what the answer already was. We just really got to know people and ask the questions that came up um, in real time. And so, but I also think the flip side of that is we didn't know what we were going to get. And right. so sometimes we'd like be like, um, I don't know how to recover from that question or that answer to that question. Or like, do you have a follow-up? Because I don't have a follow-up. I don't have a follow-up. That like that was a that was a not what you would call an open-ended question. Do not ask yes, no questions on a podcast. Right, right. Yeah, I think too though, it, those were like the pleasant surprises where I I think having a conversation is more interesting to listen to, one. And two, you, you didn't really know where the episode was going to go. So we had some questions in mind just based on what we knew about the person or their history or their business. But it was kind of fun to be like, ooh, I didn't see that coming or I didn't think she'd say that. Um, or those people that I thought would be more open but maybe were more reserved either because they were on the mic or nervous about just being live, um, you know, it's like we had to have those backup questions too ready. Um, but it was just like these nice, pleasant surprises where we weren't really sure where the episode was going to go. Um, and also as hosts, I think that's also makes it challenging because we then have to fill in and make sure that we keep telling the story and that we keep it interesting. And I think you and I have, have gotten so much better. I mean, I think every season we just improved. And I think we worked better together as a, as a team every season. And I just think kudos for us for, for keeping going and, um, and getting better, you know, no matter what kind of content you are producing, um, you always kind of cringe at your first, your first tries. (laughs) I I haven't gone back to listen yet. Have you to the first ones? No, I don't know if I could. I, I, if anyone braves that, let us know um, what you think. If our sound has evolved or our, our, our interviewing capability, I mean, I think you said it earlier before we were recording, but it's worth repeating that not just like the questions that we asked during the during each episode were more fluid and open, and we were able to take the conversations where we wanted to do it. I feel like that's what we did with the podcast. I feel like in the beginning we tried to be. Like, this is about this. It's going to be about marketing tactics and it's going to be like things you can use. But, you know, that only gets you so far and it was so shallow in some ways, right? And so then season two, we were like, okay, we want to cover brand. Brand is so all encompassing. Let's talk about brand. But because we put that lens over it, it was like every question had to be about brand. And it felt again like we're trying to force some, like, why are we talking about brand? let's get and talk about the people like let's. And so we, we just kept evolving because that's where our passion was, was wanting to hear from the people. And we wanted it to be more real and we wanted it to don't, don't couch your answer in terms of what you thought was best for the brand. Like, why did you make that decision? Why are you doing it this way? Who are you? What's your business? What have you learned? What have you fucked up on? And I think once we sort of let go of trying to put a filter of like what the season is about on top of the season, and we said, we're just going to have actual, real, human, honest conversations. It just felt more natural. And um, I don't know, hopefully more interesting. I'd love to hear from people if they agree or disagree, if we should go back to putting a, a lens or filter on on the framework of what we're talking about besides just sort of business entrepreneurship and all things awesome people. But um, right. yeah. I would love feedback on that too. And I think it makes sense though, if you think about you know, those aha moments that you have or those like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think about that? Like for me, it's those moments that are unscripted or that are unplanned and it's the coffee with an old colleague or it's at a happy hour with someone you've just met. You know, it's like, you you don't know what's going to happen. It's again, those surprises and those unintentional conversations. So um, I, I'm all for throwing out the script and yeah. seeing where it goes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, it, under the theme of like, just see where it goes and where it takes you, like we were, 
I don't know. We are a couple episodes into recording. We had other people booked for this season three. And you said, they're all women. Maybe, maybe that's our, you know, not our theme. It's not like we're only, not only women, but it so happens whether, and it's kind of hard in hindsight to say how intentional was that or how, how much did that just sort of be the uh, function of the fact that, you know, we're both women and our our networks happen to be um, very heavily weighted in in the women business community, so that's where we went to book guests. But we all of our guests this season have been been female, and so the themes, some of the questions, some of the um, conversations, especially the last few guests, really had more weight around them with the, well, that's not true. Even all the way back to the beginning of the first guest this season, we've talked about women in business and women's entrepreneurship issues and things like that. And I don't think we could have done that if we didn't. Well, I don't know. Maybe we, what do you think? Was that intentional or just, is that, was that a happy accident that we got there? I think it was a happy accident. And I also think it must have been in our minds and in our hearts, like you and me, like, I feel like we were kind of pulled that way and it just felt right. And, you know, we were, yeah, two or three people in, we're like, Oh, let's just interview women. Like this, this feels like what we should be talking about right now at this moment. Um, And so I think we both were inspired by that. And so we went with it. Um, And I think we both maybe had some hesitation, like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to limit us and I don't want to exclude anybody. But at the same time, it just kind of fit for us at that moment. Right. Right. And it doesn't mean it defines the future. It just, oh. it, sort of, it happened to be, um, it, it brought some cohesion mm-hmm. uh, to the conversation. And I will say like the guests this season, like we had way more vulnerable moments with many of our guests. Like you were saying earlier, before we started hit record, like, there's a seat, there was an episode where you were in tears and we definitely had guests in tears more than once. Um, not, um, you know, I want to emphasize it's not because, you know, business that makes people sad, but it was because I feel like we created a, an, an opportunity to have, um, to, to, for people to bring their whole self, mm-hmm. their emotional self and, and not, put on that front that they had to just sort of like be the stoic person, you know, presenting in a business sort of way. It felt really honest. It did. It felt honest. It felt authentic. And I would say those tears were not tears of sadness, but tears of empowerment and pride and, and strength and community. And like, Oh my gosh, like she went through all of that and look at her now. And right. you know, I, I kind of wanted to like stand up and cheer for them. So right. they were like good tears. That's um, right. And it made me want to like do more. Like, oh, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I almost feel like we could not have scripted because this is not scripted, like a, a better entree into uh, talking about the fact that while this is also a season three wrap episode uh, as we head into the holidays, but this is also your farewell as co-host of the M word episode. And I feel like that fits so well into following what naturally happens and wanting to do more and feeling empowered. And so why don't you share a little bit about how you came to that decision and, 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 and what's next for Heather Michael guard. Yeah. Um, I know it's it's bittersweet for sure. I always wanted to start a podcast and um, yeah, it came to you, Jennifer, three years ago with this idea and like, you didn't even skip a beat. You're like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> um, it's like, crap, I guess we're doing this. Um, and it's been so wonderful and it's been scary and it's been, um, when I was a river guide, I remember every right before I get on the river every time, like my heart would pound and I'd be really nervous. And then as soon as I got to the end of the river, I'd be so happy. And I kind of felt that way with the podcast because you're just, you know, it's intimidating. You don't know what you're going to ask. Sometimes, um, sometimes the guests are brand new. Sometimes the guests have these really big brands themselves. 
Um, so it was such a great learning opportunity for me. And I'm just so grateful to you, Jennifer, for saying yes. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, so I did go back into consulting two years ago. So my, my company, Social Moxie, um, was on the shelf for a little bit while I was working with, with you, Jennifer, at Arlington Strategy. And I um, pulled it back down a couple of years ago and have really just been focusing in the federal government space on strat strategy, marketing, social media. And it's been great. I've learned so much. Um, I think I've, as an entrepreneur, you have to make tough choices. Um, and it's like, I'm at that point where I need to potentially bring someone in to help me, either a, a contractor or an employee, or I need to start saying no. You know, it's it's just I'm getting to that that messy place that that a lot of entrepreneurs get to, where you have to say yes to things and you have to say no to things. Um, and so I'm really just focusing on those revenue generating um, activities right now. Um, I don't want to turn down clients. So again, it's like, okay, something has to give. So unfortunately, this podcast was um, something that, that brought me joy, but also I didn't feel I was able to give the amount of attention that it deserves and that it needs. Um, so I, yes, decided to step down and um, Jennifer, you were so gracious in, um, you know, letting me step down with, uh, you know, no hard feelings. And, and I know that you're going to take this, this episode and do, or I'm sorry, this podcast and do amazing things with it. I'm so excited to keep listening and to keep cheering for you. Um, but yeah, I think I'm also just, um, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, not a career shift, but just there's going to be some shifts for me in 2024. Um, so just, I need to make space for some of that as well. So this was something that I um, decided to let go of, even though it, it did bring me joy and it, it was a lot of fun. Well, and I also think that, you know, as you, as these shifts and this growth for you happens in 2024, we'll have to bring you back and get more of your entrepreneurship journey and, and delve into some of those tough, you know, this being one of those, you know, you know, heart versus mind calculations okay. that you had to make from a time management and, and just sort of business investment perspective, what was right for you right now um, to share that full story and go into more depth around that when, when you're ready to sort of uh, share more about what you're working on in 2024, which is, I think, super exciting. But it also, it's really emblematic of like all the things that we hear from so many of the people we've interviewed over the last few years. It's, um, nothing in business is linear, right? And, you know, things that work right now don't work in the future. I mean, marketing tactics change and, uh, you know, the best ROI on your time changes. And so it's completely yeah. understandable. Um, yeah. And I know that um, I'll have to, you, you've done such a good job of making sure I don't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to have to just put a little picture of you uh, <laughs> on the microphone to remind me to like keep it short. <laughs> oh, no, I think you do great. And I would love to come back. Um, yeah, I think one thing, and, and this is, I think, a question that a lot of our guests have encountered and even I've encountered over the 12 years that I've been in and out of consulting is, do you niche down? And I think I'm right now in my career, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to niche down and I'm going to focus on this one particular uh, industry, which I haven't done in many, many years. So that's kind of exciting. But yeah, I will definitely report back and um, and we'll be cheering for you and, and listening from the sides. Well, thank you. And thank you for being such an awesome co-host and for me, for, you know, birthing this idea a few years ago and being my partner and, and making it happen for the last few years. Um, it's been super fun to do it in a co-host capacity. Um, if you've made it to the, this point and you're still uh, interested in listening to the M word, it will continue in 2024 um, with, with me, myself and eyes as all the hosts and all my various personalities. Um, 
And I hope to do it justice uh, and carry on the tradition that we started together. So that has been awesome. And I guess, you know, let's end on a, on an upswing here. It, it's ho- the holidays. I mean, sickness aside, um, I know uh, today's the last day of school for our kids as we record this. Uh, the holidays uh, were coming up on Christmas and New Year's. So what are you looking forward to? Oh, boy. Um Yeah, we are not traveling this year, as I don't think a lot of people are, interestingly enough. Um, I am looking forward to watching NFL football. Um, Our team is the 49ers, and they are number one in their division right now. So we're going to watch the Niners play. Um, And just slowing down. I think, um, you know, getting ready for tax season, (laughs) catching up on, on my bookkeeping and my client, like just... Doing those things that I haven't been able to do um, as we rush to get to the holidays. So how about you? Um, I, you know, I'm at that stage where I've got a couple college kids home right now. So it's a very happy time and chaotic and there's a lot more dishes to do. But I think for the new year, I'm looking forward to um, seeing more live performances. I've, I did a few few things this past year, concerts and comedy, um, and it is soul fulfilling. And I feel like if I could consume more of that kind of input, um, as you, uh, I don't know how many people know this about me, but I love watching TikToks. Like, and I get served up a ton of comedy. Um, it could be very good for the soul to laugh. And so I just intend to to go after that more in person. And we we discovered a comedian on TikTok and then we went and saw this person um, recently. And so I, doing that, finding sort of talent that you don't know about um, is one way of using your social media to like, you know, take you into real world experiences. So that's what I'm looking forward to for the new year is a little bit more offline activity, if you will. I love that for you. And now that I know that you like TikTok videos, I have a few that I was giggling over last night. So I might <laughs> slip those to you. Please do. Please do. And well, and you know, we could do a whole other conversation, but you know, I use TikTok for recipe inspiration too. So for any, all the New Year's eating healthier um, sort of resolutions, uh, TikTok's a great source for stuff for there too. But okay. yeah. Thank you. Well, well, happy holidays to you and your family, Heather. And I I know we're going to continue to see each other in, in real life, not necessarily on this podcast, but in real life. So I look forward to that. Well, thank you, Jennifer. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for your time and support over the last three seasons. I know Jennifer is going to take the M word and knock it out of the park. So I'm so excited to to see what's in store for 2024. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season. Take care. The M Word is an Arlington Strategy production hosted by Jennifer Mulchandani and Heather Michaelgard. Our theme music is by Ben Mulchandani, also known as Moochie. Graphic design by Kayla Fagan and Emily Rare. Sound engineering and editing by Ben Mulchandani. 